the current crop of intelligent people in Ghana are businessmen and politicians who have built themselves together, form a party, not to build Ghana, but to rob Ghana. Businessmen and politicians. Yes. They have come together yes. to form political parties. Yes. Not to build Ghana, but to rob Ghana. And what's this political party? Yeah. And he's an MPP. Oh, okay. They are so, businessmen. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, in this video, uh, uh, this Ghanaian politician, he is exposing the Ghanaian uh, uh, politicians how they uh, steal from the people of Ghana. I know it happens in Kenya too. Let's listen to this and then we will talk about it uh, in this video. What, what would be your plan for import duties if Look, you were the president? If I were the president, it's very simple and very easy. Import duties... You don't charge them based on dollar, the currency, pounds, dollars, and euro. The import duties of Ghanaian product are being charged based on the rate of dollar, mm -hmm. pounds, and euro. Mm. We, we live in this country, and we spend cities, Ghanaian cities, and the values they give you for your cars is more than the, they gave the value of that car at $50,000. A 2015 car. And they use that to value the, the VAT and other things. They give their own value. Oh, they quoted $50,000 as the value? Of the car. A 10 years old car. 9 years old car. And I just bought this car for my security. So that when I'm driving, they'll be around. I just saw a nice car. I said, oh, let me buy this for the security details. And I'm going to pay $20,000 to clear. The production, those who produce the car, the origin where the car was manufactured, they didn't even pay $1,000 for the VAT on the car. Mm -hmm. They didn't pay 500 on import duties or whatever on mm -hmm. the items on the car. But in Ghana, where the per capita income of Ghanaian workers and salaries of Ghanaian workers are so less, we have to cough $20,000 to clear one car. So, Captain, this is the problem Ghanaians are going through. And until we begin to fight government, we cannot sit down and allow them to misuse. No, but when you, when you begin the process, you are tagged, disrespectful, inciting the youth, and many other political titles will be honed on you. If we don't do that, if we don't hold that government accountable, what is happening in Kenya is likely to happen in Ghana. Because one day, the youth of this country will go to the street, and you and I cannot control them. Mm -hmm. And the military cannot control them, the government can control the police can control them. Let's fact, begin. I'll join that day, don't worry. Yes, let's begin to hold our people accountable and let them do the right thing. We don't manufacture cars in Ghana for you to say that you're putting some kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, high levies on duties and other things to discourage people from importing cars. We don't even manufacture toothpick. <laughs> we don't manufacture even common phones. We can. Why do you think that mm. the most expensive product in the world is in Ghana? The most expensive item in the world is in Ghana. Ah, and what's that? Anything. Ah, anything in Ghana is the most expensive in the world. Today I'm giving you the quotation. The most expensive thing in the world is in Ghana. Yes. And the answer is anything. Anything. Anything in Ghana is the most expensive in the world. And that's my quotation. You should, you should so know. How? This is your iPhone. This is your Samsung. Mm. If you go to the U.S., you can pay maybe $500,000 for it. $500,000, $700,000. When you come to Ghana, you pay $2,000, $3,000 to get, buy this. Yes, that's correct. So tell me, if you buy a Lamborghini in the U.S. for $300,000, Ghana cities, like 300,000 euros or dollars in the U.S. You come to Ghana, you pay over $100,000 to add to it. The Lamborghini will cost you $500,000. Buy anything, just anything. Mention anything and I'll tell you. Mention anything. Milk. Milk. It's more expensive. Go to U.K. or you. It's 20 cent, 19 cent, 0 point something cent in the U.S. Ghana here, you are paying 3, 4, 5 cities. 10 cities, 12 cities. What's it? Huh? 12 cities. Did you say three cities? So you see, I'm even being... Five cities? Yeah, okay. So Milk? That's it. <laughs> so anything in Ghana is the most expensive in the world. Even our citizens have become most expensive. 
What has become expensive? The citizens. The shirt you wear is the most expensive. Your wife, the hair she put on the hair. Well, expensive. Brazilian, Brazilian. The Brazilian. Nicaraguan. Anything, anything in Ghana is the most expensive in the world. Today I'm giving you the quotation. So I've, I know what is happening in my country. What, what do you think accounted for where we are? Because we all listened to Nanado. We had his Yatisikas were comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am old, so I can't steal. <laughs> have my own money, I can't steal. The man, what money does he have? Uh, he said it. He lives in his father's house. He says he has his own money. <laughs> <laughs> He's a modest person, anyway. <laughs> and all these rhetorics is just a way of. I mean deceiving Ghanaians. The reality is that even before President Anadu became president, he had a lot of debt. Let's be sincere to ourselves. He's, He's only, giving you free senior high school. Who, you, who, no, you, Ghana. Me. Mm. Give me free senior high school. The cost of free senior you know, the free senior high school is more expensive than if we hadn't even done the free senior high school. Did you try to find out how much government it's ruling out to make it free senior high school. Yeah, they are saying they have spent 7.7 .7 billion uh, Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It's more expensive than if it was, if we were paying. So you see, they, they rule out models mm -hmm. in order to deceive you and dupe you. The current crop of intelligent people in Ghana are businessmen and politicians who have built themselves together, form a party, not to build Ghana, but to rob Ghana. Businessmen and politicians. Yes. They have come together yes. to form political parties. Yes. Not to build Ghana, but to rob Ghana. And what's this political party? Yeah. And it's an MPP. Oh, OK. They are so, businessmen. OK. They've put the, 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 their resources together. And all they want to do is to take from the coffers of this country. And that is why this, this country has borrowed over 650 billion. Yet your roads out there, the gutters are choked. No hospitals, no proper schools, no decent accommodation for its citizens. You come to the city of Ghana, the major city of Accra, that's the capital of Ghana, and you move out of this way and you look to the, inside the gutters, and five minutes to 15 minutes of rain, the whole country is flooded. Hmm. Captain, we are in serious crisis. Let the, let the politicians sit up. Because the, the kids and the youth we are training, okay, mm -hmm. one day they will hold us accountable. Uh, it's and true. we might think that Ghanaian youth are timid. Timid. But they are not. They are not. They, yeah. they are. They are, the, the giant within them is awakening now slowly <laughs> and it's coming up, it's coming up. Look, all they need is just one person, one person to start a revolution and the rest of the people will join. I'm telling all they need, just one person to make noise on the street, not an NDC, not an MPP. Somebody like me just come out on the street. And the whole people who joined. But we're not waiting for that to come now. Now, this Ghanaian politician has exposed how um, uh, the Ghanaian people, or the Ghanaian politicians, leaders, and the business people, uh, how they steal money from the people. And uh, it's, it's high time that um, a Kenyan politics has been influenced to a lot of uh, African countries. Kenyan politics, how the protest has, has been happening in Kenya and how the youth has, has turned out uh, to, to fight for their rights, it's, it's, it, it, has, it has played a big role in African politics. It's changing how the African leaders are thinking. It's changing how the politics is being played in Africa. Now every politician is very keen, like the leaders of Ghana are very keen, leaders of Nigeria and everywhere, they are very keen because they fear something like uh, this that happened in Kenya will happen in their country too and that's why they are starting uh, this conversation and it's good it's um 
I love it. I love it when African uh, leaders have this conversation. They are living in fear knowing that any time the youths or the people will take back their power. The people of that country will take back what belong to them. And that's why we are having all these discussions. That's why we are having all this conversation across the country. And I love it so much. So, um, the people of Africa, let's keep the fire burning. The leaders, some of them, they steal from us every day through various ways. Like in Kenya, some of them even use churches to steal uh, from their people. So it's high time we have this conversation. Uh, if you are from Ghana, from Africa, tell me what you think about that video on the comment section. Of course, I am the Kenyan Beast and we are doing it the African way every day, every time. One love.